So hello everybody, in today's video I am going to show you what you need to do in order to be able to schedule refresh your web sources on Power BI service. Let's get started. So hello everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you what you need to do in order to be able to schedule refresh web sources in Power BI service. Let's get started. Okay, so when the web connector got introduced into Power Query, you could actually connect to a web source that didn't require a login directly, and then you can just publish it to the web, uh, to Power BI service, and it would just refresh. But that's not the case anymore. They discovered along the way that it was a security risk doing it like that. So now you have to modify the connection or the, the call, the query that you actually send to the service in order to be able to schedule refresh it in Power BI. And that's what's basically what we're going to do here. I'm going to show you, this is a report that I created like a million years ago about how to get the distance between two cities using Google Maps API. I'm going to post the link down below so you can just grab and test yourself. So what I did basically was I created a function that basically calls the Google Map API service. You can see here, this is the URL that gets generated. And um, that was it. You could then close and apply, save, and then publish. I'm going to do the publishing thing quickly so you don't have to follow me, but then I'll show you what happens in the service when you do it like this. So here we have the data set and the report. If I go to settings, you're going to see this error. You can't schedule refresh for this data set because the following data sources could not support refresh. And then it has like a very strange query one thing. What it's basically telling you is that what you tried to do didn't work. You're not allowed to schedule refresh that. So what do you need to do? Here is how you need to create those queries in order for Power BI service to authorize the refresh. Let me show you, let me show you. So if we go here to the function, we need to change this a little bit. So let's format this a little bit better. Here is the first part of the URL. So we grab it before we actually start doing the query parameter. So we do you know, we're constructing a, uh, a URL. So you always have to have these quotations unless you have parameters. So now you're going to put here relative square bracket and relative path in one word equal. And then again, we're still constructing the query. So you have to put the quotation marks. And now we're going to throw in the query parameters that is called query equal and then again the square bracket and then we construct the parameters for that query so units is one of them and this basically tells if it is imperial or metric units then they have the origin it says where to start measuring the distance from and then we have the destination so you say from stockholm to Uppsala, for example so the destination will be Uppsala. then we have mode mode is if it is driving cycling you know how do you want to measure the distance between those two points and then you have the key this is done with an api key so that is the key So here we have our parameters, and then we're going to close the square brackets, this one and that one. And now we have the query constructed. If I click done, and I go back to distances, I'm going to show you how that works. So here's where we invoke that function. If you want to see the step-by-step, -step, go to that video because I'll show everything in detail. So here we have the origin, which is the... Um, Two city is just to put the city and the country in case that city is uh, in available in different countries. For example, Oviedo exists in the United States, so you have to say Oviedo, Spain. 
uh, and then you have the destination here. This is the unit is going to be metric and driving. I, I actually have parameters for mode and units, but the invoke custom function does not allow for parameters. I, maybe it's because it is a drop down. I don't remember, but you have to write them. So I wrote them as text. And as you can see, the thing is working beautifully. I get a table and then I can expand it and get the destination. This is uh, Spain, Sweden, and I think this was India, Mumbai, yes. So you can see the difference, the distance between the two cities and the duration, so how long it takes to get there. If I close and apply, save and publish, you'll see what happens now. I'm going to do that quickly also, so fast forward so you don't have to watch it. Okay, so here we have again the same um, database and the same report. We go to settings. And you see that I don't get any error. Here's what you, what's going to happen. You're actually going to get an error. It's going to say these some credentials are invalid. Then you have to edit credentials. And then here you put whatever privacy level you need. And then you have to click here, skip test connection. Okay. Once you've done that, then you are actually good to go. And this thing will actually schedule refresh. So you're good to go. So I didn't say this is from Chris Webb blog. He published this in 2016 and that's what saved me actually, because I didn't have the slightest clue of how to do this. So I'm going to post the link down below to his blog so you can actually read all the details. And then he has made an update for January 2021 so you can you know, read more about web connectors. So hopefully this helps you. I have a second version of these. You know, when I did the COVID vaccination report, I actually showed you how to do these for GitHub so it actually refreshes. It normally refreshes, but depending on how you're doing the query, you might not. So if you are getting your files from folder, you will need to change the query differently. So I'll show you, I show you there how to do that. I'm going to post a link down below there too. So you have two examples. So I'll see you again on Wednesday with another misleading charts video. And until then, take care. Bye-bye.